Well, in Shakespeare's Sonnet 147, he describes the love sickness, and this poem is in conversation with Sonnet 127 and 129. It's still within the poems called the Dark Lady Sonnets. He says, my love is as a fever, longing still for that which longer nurseth the disease, feeding on that which doth preserve the ill, the uncertain sickly appetite to please. We have themes of the appetite, of lust, perhaps, of Sonnet 129. Love or lust is now the disease. The love is a fever, a sickness, longing still for that which makes me sicker. Here's the speaker like a patient describing his illness. And here we have the doctor's orders. My reason, the physician to my love, angry that his prescriptions are not kept, hath left me, and I, desperate now, approve, desire is death, which physic did accept. Here we have at the beginning of this line two figures contrary, my love in reason. Reason is the physician or the doctor. My reason is the physician or the doctor to my love, the patient who is sick, angry that his advice is not followed, the doctor has left. Reason has left me. So he's in a state of madness, he's saying. Again, hearkening back to Sonnet 129, where lust was a kind of madness. So now that the doctor's gone, he's left to his own devices. And I, desperate now, approve that desire is death. The desire which physic, which the doctor did accept or forbade, we're thinking that this physic is the reason, the physician. Past cure I am. Now reason is past care. That's a clever, again, so we've got the opposite here. My reason against my love. My reason at the beginning of this line. My love at the end of this line. Again, past cure at the beginning. Past care. He's now past care at the end. Again, this, it's balanced on the extreme ends. And it's, it's kind of just like the, the, the speaker in this poem is really going to the extremes here. And frantic, mad, with ever more unrest. Again, hearkening back to the kind of madness that the speaker was describing in Sonnet 129. My thoughts and my discourse, as madmen's are, at random from the truth, vainly expressed. For I have sworn thee fair. Ah, who is he addressing here with the thee? He's suddenly addressing here at the very end. For I have sworn thee fair and thought thee bright, who art as black as hell and dark as night. Very bitter, bitter sonnet here. For I have sworn I have thought, sworn you were one thing, thought you were another, but you are something else. Just like Sonnet 138, where the deception was, he's pretending to be younger than he is, and she's pretending to be faithful. They both believe each other, but they know something different. Here, what really is, is contrasted with what he swore she was, and what he thought she was. Who art as black as hell, as dark as night. What has she done other than the fact that he's gone insane over her? Uh, it's not apparent. Has he sworn off the so-called dark lady? He's going back to Sonnet 127, in which he, he praised her darkness as a new kind of beauty. Now he seems to be changing his mind and cursing that beauty that he once praised. So it's a, it's a fantastic turn there here coming to the end of the sonnets where he's he's looked back angrily at the one whom he previously praised i find it to have the same kind of bitterness as dunn's early some of dunn's early love poetry it has a kind of resentment to it so this is sonnet 147 hope this helped thanks everyone for watching and until next time